So in this video, we're going to look at the gamma function. And the gamma function is defined by this integral. 0 to infinity, x to the a minus 1, e to the minus x, dx. a is our parameter, which you can see is here for the value of the gamma function. Now, if you take this integration parameters out here, you can't integrate this function by normal methods. It's a non-elementary function. But by putting in our values here, we can integrate sometimes by u sub and sometimes by integration by parts. So let's just have a look at that now. So gamma at a. So let's have a look at the simplest one of all, which would be gamma 1. So gamma 1, obviously 1 is the a value. So we've got x to the 1 minus 1. So integral 0 to infinity x to the 1 minus 1, e to the minus x, dx. 1 minus 1 is 0, anything to 0 is just 1, so this term just vanishes away. And then we're left with 0 to infinity, e to the minus x, dx. So now just a straightforward integral now. So we get minus e to the minus x, 0 to infinity. Okay, minus e to the minus infinity. Well, anything to the negative infinity for the exponential function is just going to approach zero. So therefore, we just put zero for the first one. And then for zero, e to the minus zero is just the same as e to the zero. And as we said here before, anything to the power zero is just one. So it's minus, minus one. So this answer is obviously one. So we can write this value up here now, gamma one. equals 1. Okay, right, let's try another value. Let's try a half. So now let's put that in now, gamma 1 half. So that 0 to infinity, x to the half minus 1, e to the minus x, dx. Okay, well, half minus one is minus a half. So now we've got basically one over square root of x. So basically we've got infinity to zero, x to the minus one half. So we've got one over square root of x, e to the minus x, dx. Okay, how are we going to integrate this now? Well, one way we can do, we could do a u sub here. So with a u sub, we can take away this line and just go straight in with u equals x squared. Okay, so the other way around. u squared equals x. Sorry, that's the one way around. u squared equals x. So our x is going to sub for u squared. Same for this one here. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but let's just go for it. Near 0 to infinity. So x is u squared u squared, and then multiply that by minus a half. And then e to the minus x just becomes e to the minus u squared. Just to check our parameters of integration, when x is zero, u squared just still becomes zero, and infinity still be infinity, infinity squared is still infinity. So now we need to sort out our dx. So x is u squared, and dx, equals 2u du. Okay, so exchange out for that. 2u du. Okay, let's bring the 2 out front. 0 to infinity. u, we can bring out here. Now what have we got here? 2 times minus a half. So basically we've got u to the minus 1. So we've got 1 over u. Well, that works out very nicely, times e to the minus u squared. The u and the 2 have been dealt with, so now we're just left with the du. Okay, that was very satisfying. So now we've got 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus u squared, du. 
Now, anybody who does statistics will be very familiar with this function here, e to the minus u squared. So this one is the Bell distribution graph, which just goes along like that and never actually touches the x-axis. It starts off here at value 1. It can be any value here, but here we're going to use value 1. And then what we do know is this integral here, which is the error function integral, um, this here value is uh, square root of pi over 2. So the area of this here is square root of pi over 2. So what we can say is that this here is root pi over 2. So we've got 2 root pi root pi over 2 basically equals square root of pi. So therefore after all that what we can say is gamma over half is square root of pi. Put that in here. Okay. Works out quite nicely. All right, let's move on to some gamma function calculations. So, properties of the gamma function. So, gamma a is basically a minus one factorial. Okay, so now what we can do, we could do gamma a plus one. So gamma a plus 1, so if you do an a plus 1, a plus 1 minus 1 just gives us a, so that it becomes a factorial. Now one property with the factorial is that gamma a is basically a, let's just write this down here, a factorial here equals a times gamma function a. Okay, right, so what does that mean? So if we're trying to work out, for example, the gamma uh, function value for 3 over 2, so let's try and work this one out, 3 over 2, basically, that basically means we've got 3 over 2 here, so 3 over 2 plus 1, that basically means the a is a half, so we've got a half, and then the gamma a, which would be the gamma of a half, which we've got here, so square root of pi, so that equals root pi over 2, just by using properties as a gamma function, so mean no need to integrate. So let's put that one in here. Okay. So if you know 3 over 2, Let's quickly have a go at 5 over 2. So gamma function 5 over 2. So for 5 over 2, using this one here, a plus 1, but if a plus 1 is 5 over 2, or a is 3 over 2, so if you use this property here, 3 over 2 times gamma 3 over 2, so that's times root pi over 2, basically we'll get now we'll get 3 pi over 4. 3 root pi over 4, sorry, I meant to say. So now we've got gamma 5 over 2, 3 square root of pi over 4. So let's just try just try one more of these fractions. So actually we'll just go here, we don't need to cross it out just yet. So gamma. 7 over 2, what does that give us? So again, using the a plus 1 is 7 over 2, we can now say a is 5 over 2. So 5 over 2 times gamma 5 over 2, which is 3 square root of pi over 4. So working that out, 15, pi, 15 root pi over 8. So now you can see the pattern forming here. So 7 over 2 equals 15 square root of pi over 8. Okay, so that's how we work those out. Now for the whole integers, it's a bit more straightforward. 
So let's say we're working out, for example, gamma 5. So gamma 5. So a plus 1 is 5. That means here our a is 4, so 4 factorial. So 4 factorial, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, so that's just 24. So let's just plug that in there. Gamma of 5 equals 24. And then that's the same for all of the integers. Let's say we plug in here gamma of, let's go 8. So gamma of 8, if a plus 1 is 8, then we want 7 factorial. So 7 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7. 1, 2, 6, 24, 120, 720. 720 times 7, 5040. So gamma 8 equals 5040. Okay, what about negative numbers? Well, negative numbers is a little bit different. So let's say we're trying to work out gamma of minus one half. It's not quite the same principle of this. So what I do to this, nice little shortcut, instead of using this, what I use is one over a times gamma of a plus one. Just made that, it looks like a nine. It just made that a little bit looking, better looking A. So gamma minus a half, how are we going to do that? One over that, so it's one over minus a half times gamma of A plus one. So if our A, in this case, is minus a half, A plus one is positive a half. So now we're going to multiply this by square root of pi. Okay, so we'll quickly working this out, flip the two on the top, we get minus two root pi. And that's how to get gamma of minus a half. Let's just write, let's write the negative ones up here. Minus two square root of pi. Okay, let's just take this one out. Let's do another couple. So let's just write this down now. So gamma of a when a is less than zero. That's our little formula for the negative ones. So now let's try gamma of minus three over two. So that one equals, so minus three over two, so that's one over minus three over two. And it's minus three over two, we need gamma of minus a half. So gamma minus a half is minus two square root of pi. Okay, so one over minus three over two, that becomes minus two over three times minus two square root of pi. Uh, pi. Okay, minus two times minus two is plus four divided by three. So that's four thirds pi. So you see here now the value is flipped from negative to positive. So let's see what happens now, gamma minus five over two. Okay, again, use this formula here, one over a, so it's one over minus five over two. And then gamma a plus one, so minus 5 over 2 plus 1 is minus 3 over 2, which is 4 thirds pi. 4 thirds root pi, I should say. Okay, going carefully with this one. Minus 2 over 5 times 4 over 3 root pi. Minus 2 times 4 is minus 8. 5 3 is 15, so it's minus 8 over 15 square root of pi. So you can see now we're alternating between positive and minus. And it would be almost the same values all the way down as the positive, but plus one. So here the seven over two 
is a negative version of the minus 5 over 2. The 5 over 2 is the same as the negative 3 over 2. The 3 over 2 is a negative version, what we simply called a minus a half. Hence why we got the reciprocal in here. Okay, that's all that. So, what does the graph of this function look like? Well, I'm only going to take the graph of the positive values for now. So, this is our x, and this is our y. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay, so the value if you can never plug in a zero for the gamma function is undefined. So what happens is the gamma of one is one. So that will come down here. What we'll also find is that the gamma of two is also two. That's equal there. So the gamma of two is also one, sorry. So this one will come here. So basically what it will happen is it will be in a sim asymptotic all the way up there, hit down to the one here. Now instead of going straight across, it does get a little bit below here, but doesn't touch this axis here, and then it shoots off to infinity all the way up here. And that's our graph of the gamma function. On the negative, you'll see what happens here. At minus a half, let's just put that in there, it becomes minus two. So that's going to be down here. And at minus 3 over 2, it becomes 4 over 3. It's going to keep alternating here. But then it does also lots of other funny things here as well. So I'm not going to draw a straight line on it. Wouldn't do it justice at this stage. That'll be for another video another time. But there you go. That's the, ga the gamma function.